Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this week's video. And in this week's video, we're going to look at visual effects. Now, visual effects are not a strength of mine. Um, I'm not very good at them, uh, admittedly. I'm not very good with materials either. So them two together don't really go hand in hand. So any way that I can find uh, an easier way to get good quality or high quality visual effects in my game or in my prototypes, um, I'm all for that. So. I've come across a method which I wasn't aware of, um, which essentially allows me to use sprite sheets or flip books or atlases, um, depending on how you find them. And essentially what that is, is if I just click here, um, you can see that we've got smoke up in the top left here on this pipe. Uh, we've got some fire here uh, and we've got some sort of like uh, magical looking smoke, let's say. Um, now. These are not particle effects. Uh, these are not. Um, these are not being generated in any way. Uh, this is actually a, a collection of images being played like a small animation. Now, um, obviously, to have these created as a particle effect would probably be more cost of, um, more costly in terms of GPU, having to render them and stuff like that. Um, and to have this sort of quality thing. Um, be running all the time um, would probably be expensive however this way I'm led to believe uh, is, is quite cost effective in terms of um, the quality you get now let me just go into how this this works so if we look at this uh, apple for example uh, there's sort of like a ring of smoke um, sort of coming from this apple now that is made up of this texture uh, so this is this is to me a flip book or a sprite a sprite sheet um, and essentially um, if we go from left to right and as we carry on down this this sheet uh, this basically produces an animation um, so if we was to play this uh, in repeat you'd get an animation for example so with that texture being um, added to unreal and bearing in mind you can google search for sort of smoke flick books and there are loads of different flip books for you to choose from. Uh, so you can just grab these from anywhere. Um, here's a nice good quality one. Um, you can just save these and um, and then import them. So let's move that back over here. Um, once, you've, once you've imported it, uh, you'll obviously you'll get this texture. You don't need to do anything to it. But what you can do is if we open up um, a new material, um, what you'll get Obviously, you won't get any of this if you open a new material, sorry. Um, but what you'll need to do is with the uh, node that sort of is already in your material, uh, just select that and on the left hand side, change the blend mode to additive. Now, just a quick note, you only need to do this if your, um, your sprite sheet has a black background, which you'll probably find most of them do. Um, because essentially what it does is it strips the black from behind it and leaves only the white uh, behind. Um, so if, if you don't have a black background, you know, setting that probably isn't the best thing to do. Um, then essentially you want to drag in your texture sample, which you may already have. Um, drag in a texture sample and then this is where you'll select that, um, that sprite sheet. So I called mine hole because that's what it looks like to me. So I select that. And then what I did is I plugged the alpha straight into the opacity. Um, and then the RGB value, um, I actually plugged it into a multiply along with a, um, I guess, a vector free, which you can just hold free on the keyboard and click and you can create one of them. Select the color over on the left, so like blue or something like that. Uh, and then you can just drag that straight in. And because your sprite sheet is black and white, this just overrides that white value and sets the color of your um, your animation to whatever color you select. Um, so that's fine. See, so I, I picked green, for example. Um, now, on this texture sample, it can take in a UV, and essentially, uh, by changing the UV, um, it's basically which part of that picture should I look at. Now that's where this flipbook node comes in because what you can do is you can feed in a little bit of information into this flipbook like how many rows does this flipbook have, how many columns does this flipbook have, um, how fast should I animate, how fast should I go through each of these rows and columns um, and by doing that 
by obviously going from um, left to right all the way through the sheet repeatedly, uh, it creates an animation, a flipbook animation. Um, so all you need to do is chuck in this flipbook node um, and sort of for your time frame, uh, you just need a time node. Now you can plug that straight into there and it won't make that much of a difference. Um, but by plugging it into a multiply um, and then plugging that into, whoop, and then plugging that into your um, animation, you can then slow the, slow the time down to give you sort of different effects. So I've currently got mine to 0.8. I like the look at that. You could slow this right down to like 0.2 and you'll see you get this slow motion um, animation, which depending on how many images you've got on your sheet, you might need to adjust this to make it look right. So for me, 0.8 was quite a nice figure. So we've got time, we've got rows and columns. Um, you just need to plug in a texture coordinate into the UV. Just drag off that and type in text and it should come up straight away as texture coordinate. You don't need to make any changes to that. Uh, and then once you've got that, you can just save it and you've pretty much got your uh, animated material already. Um, and essentially you just need to apply that to something in the game. Now, um, being naturally um, a bit lazier and wanting to get things done a bit quicker, what I did is I created a new blueprint, a blank one, and just added what's called a material billboard. Now, if you've never used billboards before, uh, essentially it's just something that always looks at the screen. So no matter where I am in this game, that billboard will always look at me in uh, in my direction. So that's not gonna that sort of smoke ring is never gonna look any different. That fire is always gonna be facing me. So if you want sort of like 3D depth to your visual effects, this probably isn't gonna be the best thing for you. Um, but if you just want sort of like lanterns on the wall to look like they're on fire, um, if you want smoke to always come out of a pipe um, and not particularly look any different, it's just kind of like a, a small off to the side effect, this, this is probably perfect. Um, so yeah, I just used a billboard um, and then on the right you've got sprite elements i added one element and then if you drop this down you can pick sort of your material so for me i picked birds but i've also got a fire uh, and i've also got a smoke uh, the smoke one's pretty cool looks pretty detailed and then you can change the size of it with this base x and base y so i can set this a lot smaller uh, but 100 works for for, for my animation so I'm not going to save that because now I've got a smoky apple but other things that you can do with it is for example this fire you can see that we've got this sort of yellow glow uh, which goes with it and when I play the game this will sort of slightly animate you can see that that fire is um, sorry the sort of glow in the background is sort of like fading and coming back just to give it a bit more of a bit more life um, this has nothing to do with the flipbook at all, but it's something you could do, is if I open this one, what you can see is I just got a timer by event. So every 1.1 second, um, it, it does this lerp fire, which I've just noticed is my uppercase typo. Um, and essentially what it does is every 1.1 second, it plays this timeline forward. And then because of the flip flop, the next time it does it, it does it in reverse, then forward, then in reverse, then forward. And essentially all it's doing is it's lerping from a different intensity on a point light. So how bright that bulb is going to be. Um, yeah, you can't see that in the preview, but essentially all it does is it changes the intensity of the bulb from backwards to forwards. You could give this a bit more randomness by saying random floating range. Uh, let's pick minimum... 2,000, maximum 3,000, and then for this one, random. Random floating range, and I don't know, let's pick 750 and 1250. Oh, 1250. Hit compile, uh, and let's see what this looks like in the game. This might look a bit glitchy, but you can, you can change. So that's almost got like a stuttery effect as well. So, you know, that might be an added bonus. It looks like the fire's flickering. Um, 
And obviously, if you've got that in a pit with some logs and some rocks and stuff like that, it may all add up to, to be a nice nice little bits and pieces. Uh, and that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, what I will do is I'll link a video down below. from. Um, it's a video that I watched on YouTube. I think it's by Stylized Station. Um, and that really got me into the idea of Flipbook being possible. Um, he offers um, he offers some tutorials at the end of his um, video. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to flipbooks and materials and sort of VFX. Um, so if you want even more detail, I recommend you go over there and check that out. Um, this is kind of just like... What I didn't catch that. This, Could you try again? Yeah, you should have. Uh, this is just what you can do with it. And, you know, just that little bit will help me along. Uh, and I hope it helps I'm you not too. Sure I okay, I had to pause again there. My watch interrupted me. But um, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, if it was, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. If I can hit that goal, that'd be absolutely amazing. Um, if it was helpful for you, please consider giving me a like. A uh, bit of feedback um, is really all I asked for. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you're interested in watching some sort of gameplay clips, um, there's not much there for now, but um, up in the channel banner, um, you'll have to go onto the channel and up at the top, there's my other channel, which is um, IBKI Plays. Um, my idea is when I do play some games on my off time, uh, I'll just take some little clips of me gaming uh, and I'll upload them every so often um, just to something slightly different. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more regularly because um, obviously when you're playing games, I could probably get a couple of clips um, at a time. So there is that. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next Sunday.